Welcome back. This is Dr. Hadi here. Today's topic is a quick review about enzyme and there are some points mentioned on the whiteboard. We will discuss these points and these points will definitely help you in gaining more marks. The first point is the catalyst. Without catalyst, we cannot start. We cannot, uh, we will not be able to understand enzyme. A catalyst is any substance that is used to speed off a chemical reaction. What is a chemical reaction? Let's suppose we have, for your simplicity, we have A, uh, this is one molecule or compound that is going to react with another molecule, B, and when these two combine together, a new product C will be formed. This is called product and these two are called as reactants. The system of the reactant and product is called a chemical reaction. That is called a chemical reaction. And do you know chemical reaction are not only taking place in the laboratory, but these reactions also take place inside a living body, inside our body, inside plant cell, inside different living cells, living body. And these chemical reactions serve as a wheel of life, as a, as a source of life. They, they, they provide energy. These reactions are involved in, in the maintenance of life. When these reactions, whenever these reactions are stopped, then the life will stop. So, in order to speed up this chemical reaction in our body, we need a catalyst. And this catalyst is called as enzyme. That is why we use the word biocatalyst with enzyme. And do you know the word catalyst? can be used alone in the lab means when you when you uh, add some substance to speed up a chemical reaction in the laboratory you will add a catalyst only but the same substance when speed up a reaction inside your body then they will not be called a catalyst alone but they will be called as a biocatalyst or enzyme so with the help of enzyme, a reaction that was supposed to take place uh, and that was supposed to complete in, 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 in 10 hours or in 10 days or in, in 10 months, those reactions, these reactions will be completed in a fraction of a second with the help of the enzyme. Means enzyme speed up the reactions. This was just uh, the, uh, the uh, a bit introduction of the enzyme. Now, the nature. Enzymes are made of protein. Majority of the enzymes are made of protein. You can say 99% protein are made of uh, enzymes are made of protein. So here I would like to write that enzymes are made of protein. Fine? Protein. Except except one enzyme that is RNA in nature that we, we call it ribozyme. Fine? This is the exceptional case. This is enzyme, but it is not protein in nature. So this is an exceptional case. Then we have next point, specificity. Enzyme, if I write an enzyme with E, like this E, 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 E in an enzyme, if it is going to combine if uh, with uh, a, a, a carbohydrate, let's suppose I'm right here, carbs, there's a carbohydrate and it is going to catalyze the carbohydrate, meaning it's going to break down the uh, carbohydrate or it is going to uh, synthesize a carbohydrate whatsoever. Then this enzyme, once again, if you place it in, in front of lipid, Lipid is another biological molecule. So this, the same enzyme that was acting on the carbohydrate will not be able to act on the lipid. That is why we use the word specific. If sometime if you, you, you see the statement enzymes are specific, it means that enzyme, if one enzyme is catalyzing one type of molecule, the same enzyme cannot be, cannot catalyze other type of molecule. 
there is a special lecture available on the specificity of the enzyme on the master level this is just for your simplicity second a small active site if I draw the diagram of an enzyme I will say that an enzyme is a globular protein that is made up of smaller unit called amino acid I mean there will be amino acid these small circles represent amino acids so lot of amino acids will combine to form an enzyme the bulk portion of the the majority portion of the enzyme uh, is made up of ordinary amino acid I will I will say the word uh, ordinary amino acid because these amino acids will not take will not take part in the chemical reaction so there will be some special amino acids will be some special amino acids that will participate in the chemical reaction and these amino acids are found in a small region of the enzyme in a small region a small pocket like structure of the enzyme this small region is called as active site small region is called as active site and the amino acids uh, which are present in this active sites they are called as active site amino acid and usually they they they, they contain a charge why because this enzyme is going to combine attach with a substrate what is substrate a substrate is any molecule which is going to catalyze catalyze me which is going to break down or which is going to synthesize in the future any molecule that is going to uh, catalyze is called as substrate so a substrate may be carbohydrate it may be a protein it may be a lipid it may be nucleic acid it may be any molecule so any molecule that is going to combine with the enzyme or any molecule to which an enzyme is going to sub uh, to attach is called as substrate so a substrate which is written as s this substrate is going to uh, will come and attach with the enzyme but there is a special place for the substrate this place is called as active site and on the active side you will see special amino acid that usually contain charge one example is lysozyme the example is lysozyme this is an enzyme it contains 129 amino acids among these amino acids only uh, five amino acids if and if I was not wrong you can check the number only five amino acids occupy the active site only five out of all these 129 amino it means that the active site contain very few number number of amino acids okay so we have small active site and then we have sensitive okay fine as you know enzyme an enzyme is made of protein and protein can be subjected to a uh, breakdown process to denaturation process I have recorded a video on the denaturation process denaturation of the enzyme as well as in, as, a, as an enzyme is protein in nature so there is a chance that this protein can be denatured how every enzyme can function in proper environment mean proper environment means proper temperature proper temperature okay air proper pH these two are very common when you change the temperature a very high not a slight uh, a little bit high temperature no a very high temperature may cause the disruption of this structure may cause the denature of the enzyme once you increase the temperature to a certain limit then the enzyme structure will be dismantle or disorganized which we say denature and we use the word sensitive enzyme is sensitive to 
temperature means temperature can affect the the function of the enzyme you cannot perform enzyme activity at any temperature so or however there are some there are some temperature limits at which the enzyme can work properly then there is ph if you change the ph if you change the ph there is also a chance that the structure of the enzyme is changed the shape of the enzyme is changed once again there is there is a, a probability of denaturation what is mean by denaturation denaturation means the change in the shape or the structure of the enzyme due to temperature or ph is called as denaturation so that is why we use the word sensitive sensitivity enzymes are sensitive and then there is another word cofactor as we know that one enzyme if i write here this is one enzyme and it oh, the, the whole enzyme is made of protein then not all enzyme but uh, some enzyme they need another friend they need another non-protein part non-protein part here i would like to write here in in just a small box here non-protein part so when this non-protein part is combined with the protein part then this structure is called as cofactor the enzyme is incomplete as far as it is not combined with that with that friend with that non-protein part uh, called as cofactor and the the enzyme need the cofactor in order to establish a chemical reaction in order to participate in a chemical reaction okay and remember not all enzyme some enzymes uh, require cofactor and there are so many example of cofactor there is another lecture available on the cofactor but i would like to add one point that some of the b complex vitamins are involved are used as a cofactor you can say some of the vitamins are used as a cofactor however there are some other substances as well that can be used as a cofactor then we have activation and inactivation this is the last point enzyme are under strict regulation in our body enzyme can be uh, regulated means they can be stopped means an enzyme which is already doing its function it can be stopped by a feedback mechanism or an enzyme which is stationary which is inactive which is not doing any chemical reaction which is not performing that enzyme can be restarted so different signals under different signals an enzyme can be activated means it will be allowed to start or it can be inactivated means it can be allowed to uh, to stop because of different signal due to different signals and one more thing that i i just forget to to to, to share with you is that in enzyme when participate in a chemical reaction let's suppose this is a chemical reaction and here we have an enzyme e okay fine this is an enzyme e when an enzyme participates in a chemical reaction a product will be formed means within less time nothing will happen no change will happen in the structure of the enzyme an enzyme will only speed up the chemical reaction and nothing will happen to its structure before the the chemical reaction in after the chemical reaction the structure and shape of the enzyme will remain same and one last point from the book of satya narayan uh, a teacher is always a good catalyst for the study of the student mean if a student is unable to to perform to have a good study from his or her book and then if that if that student uh take the help from a, from a teacher then the teacher will help student in such a way that the student's idea will be cleared the student mind will be cleared about so many topics and that student will start studying himself means self study 
and we say that who uh, speed of the the study process of the student because of the teacher because a good teacher is always a catalyst in the life of a student so if you want to become a teacher in future i hope you will become a good catalyst in the student of life thank you up to this place see you in the next lecture of the exam chapter bye bye